everybody. Welcome to our third consecutive episode of uh, Square Triangle. Um, got a few more of these. Not consecutive anymore, but... No, this was know. the three-week stretch of everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we have Bad Blood in like two weeks now. Yeah, I think we do. I pinned the uh, I pinned the timetable of the pay-per-views in the Discord. Yeah, I'll so look I think it's a... Uh, Two, so two or three weeks. Yeah, October fifth. So, yeah. Oh, okay. We have we have some time then. We have plenty of right. time in between. Yep, yep. So uh, this week is going to be AEW All Out, not to be confused with All In. You might be asking yourself, didn't All In just happen like a week and a half ago? And you're right, it did. I don't like this. No, it, uh, it was two weeks ago because we had the <laughs> WWE one between them. So yeah, I still yeah. don't like it. Yeah, all in, and then we had Bash in Berlin, and then we had this. So nice little three week stretch. Yeah, but uh, um, thankful, but thankfully, uh, next year all in takes place July twelfth in Texas. So between all in and all out is going to be a little more spaced out, which gives AEW plenty of time to develop all out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they did what like they did the well. With what, yeah, they did well with what they had for two weeks now instead of one week like they did last year. Uh, but I think having you know some more time to breathe would be a little bit better. I agree. So um, I agree. Uh, in saying all of that, overall, I thought every match was pretty good. Like, this I was will a... say it's a while to have a card without Chris Jericho. Yeah, no Chris Jericho on this card. Um, only a few titles being really defended. Uh, I think all things considered, uh, we had. We didn't have a tag team match, did we? Oh, we did. So the Young Bucks. Yeah, so that of the titles, it's the one that I at least remember. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so let's uh, address the thing in the room. Uh, uh -huh. All in, incredibly happy, wrestling, all out. This was the everybody dies at the end of the season. <laughs> this like is this. AE yeah. AEW's tournament of death, so to speak. Yeah, yeah no uh, Jesus. we have two people who are getting yeah. time off. Uh, reports for MJF is taking time off because he's filming a movie. Uh, and Swerve re-signed, and one of the conditions was he, you know, gets some time off. And with how brutal that match was with Hangman Adam Page, you know, it's a way of writing him out storyline-wise. Um, let's hop into that first one with MJF and Daniel Garcia, because the finish of this match has some stuff behind it, too, because apparently where we thought Daniel Garcia resigned at all in when he showed back up apparently he did not so that's why in this you would expect him to you know get his revenge but MJF ends up winning <clears throat> and then they give the angle of Jer of Garcia you know taking out MJF uh but at the time of this recording I don't think a contract has been settled yet for Garcia so he's uh, still out of the uh, open I will say I thought this match was superb oh this is a great fucking wrestling match like just technical reversal it just shows like these two guys i mean mjf has a very i'm going to say a very wwe style of how he wrestles and garcia is a great technical wrestler but i mean they fit so well together here in chemistry it was so this was such a good opening match it's and, one of the things i appreciate the most about mjf is they've put him against you know lucha libre they've put him against technical they've put him against hardcore they put him against all sorts of different opponents and he makes all of them look like a million bucks every time it, um, it really and does. he just works really well with them uh and i just wish well i mean he's gonna get a movie so it'll be a while but i just wish we would get we got more of that yeah he's definitely uh being paid a lot to kind of just be a, a he's one of the top guys still but he still has you know this back and forth i think with this like this movie career that i guess he's trying to build now which works you know i think he can transition very well into a hollywood role um in terms of like just the character work that he does mm -hmm. but yeah this is a if you want to watch a good like technical wrestling match this is a great match to watch and i mean it ends you know with a nice predictable uh mjf fashion even though like we didn't see this finish coming uh he hits the low blow he gets the pin and then they go for the whole post-match angle where he tries to trick garcia with a handshake but garcia catches the second low blow 
and then hits him with that avalanche pile driver. And then he leaves through the crowd. Uh, like uh, CM Punk did after he won the title. So it's just a very interesting uh, story here with Garcia while we figure out, you know, if he's going to resign or not, because it's like, is he leaving? <clears throat> is he you know, just coming back? Is, it, the whole thing's just the story, I guess, is going week by week until they know whether or not he's staying or going. So, yeah. And um, yeah. And um, I, I think personally, I want him to stay in AEW, but I'm pretty sure he wants to test the waters, you know, to see if another company has any interest. I'm pretty sure WWE would be interested, but most likely, uh, I want it. I think Daniel Garcia will end up staying with AEW, you know, because if they pretty much ended him right here, you know, if this was his last match, it was a good, you know, cliffhanger, you know, yeah. just to um, kind of hang it out there. Yeah, and I think, I think he might lean towards staying with AEW because I think he was in that whole thing with uh, Swerve saying like their their contracts are bad for this business because we don't see the market value in Swerve Strickland. I think RCO is one of the names that came up too. It's like, uh, it's not good for this industry. He's being paid too much for what he's worth. And I'm like, that just sounds like WWE doesn't want to start paying their guys more. <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds like That sounds like Cope to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, how, that's, that's, that's coping. No, that sounds um, like WWE wants to you know, hand out big money like that. And they're probably concerned that their other the guys on their roster are about to start asking for that type of money. So, yeah, I mean, they get covered. They just made five billion off of Netflix. It'd be all right. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I mean, this if was for, a great. If for some reason you're listening to this and you and you have a WWE contract, ask for a raise. Yeah. Yeah. Get your value. Uh, I think putting this match as the opening did wonders for this pay per view. I think yes. this match kind of set like the the baseline of what people should expect uh, going forward for tonight. And, I mean, some of these matches blew this fucking card out the water, like just across the board, all the different styles. Um, we'll move in to the second match here is Claudio uh, and Wheeler versus the Young Bucks for the tag team championships. Yep. I feel like this was just kind of with where the story goes. With, at the end of the night and everything, I think this felt kind of like just showing Claudio and Wheeler as uh, as wrestlers because the Bucks did a lot, but it seemed like it was really shining a light on uh, the BCC as a tag team for the most part. And we put a pin in that because something else comes up later. Yeah, something else comes up later, and it's a very weird uh, thing based on you know where the titles are right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, this was just like showing that the Bucks completely were outclassed by Claudio, like in terms of strength, this match. Claudio was literally just handling these guys without issues. And it yeah. was fun to watch. I mean, Claudio is one of those guys. He's always been underappreciated uh, for the most part. But I mean, he's a great fucking wrestler. <laughs> like, he really is. Genuinely a strong man. Like, mm -hmm. like an old, tiny, strong man who can like, you know, pick up the giant... The triangle weight over their head. I think uh somebody I think it was something from what culture they were asking like people in WWE uh who do you think is the strongest? And I think it was like pound for size and like pound for pound, it's Claudio is like the strongest wrestler that they had on their roster. Yeah. I'm like he uh he's lean, but it is muscle like underneath it. You know, I, I thought for a match that was kind of pieced together to probably what the day before this pay-per-view or like yeah. a week before i can't remember um it wasn't bad you know it, it was what it was i just thought it was mostly a filler match that showcased the bcc in general you know actually claudio and you know the bucks they kind of did the usual stuff nothing out of the ordinary and uh, it was a very funny moment where he kicked the barricade and i like the cartoon ass reaction like holding his that, foot that and was funny. Oh, yeah. it was the bucks that, that, that like was, being just comedic heels like they do yeah, but overall, you know, other than that, you know, this was just a pretty standard match from the Bucks. You know, I wasn't as much into it as everybody else was, but, you know, it wasn't that bad. Overall, now, I, would, I would recommend it. Yeah, I feel like this is definitely, like, it's not one of the weaker match. It's not, like, a bad match, but it's just one of the weaker matches yeah. on the card. Uh, I will once again continue to sing the praises of Wheeler Yuta. Yeah, he's improved. 
he's improved a lot. Like it's there was a worse match on this card. That's later on. Yeah. Um, I thought. The finish of this, they go for the fastball special. It's caught with the knees up. Claudio is restrained from helping uh, Wheeler escape the pin. And it doesn't seem like uh, it's not a solid defeat. It's definitely like the Bucks stole it, which definitely helps the keep the momentum going a bit. But yeah, based on what happens at the end of the night, uh, I'm not really sure where Claudio and Wheeler uh, go from here. Uh, it's going to be interesting because uh, at the t- day of recording this, it is uh, September 11th as we're recording this. There is Dynamite tonight, and they said that John Moxley will be there, and I think I shared in the Discord. They're going to have this man cut an unhinged promo on 9-11. God bless TK. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's it's going to be a thing. It sure is. Yeah. Uh, also feeding into this because of just the energy of the last few matches on this card too. I hear the media scrim was only like 15 minutes. Nobody was there. And I'm like, I think that really hits home the fact that it's like, shit, half my roster fucking died. Tonight. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like there's no stars here because everybody's beat the hell up from the shit that they just went through. Uh, yeah, so pretty good uh, tag team match uh, in general. Definitely one of the less hype matches on the card uh, as we see going forward. And then this fucking match happens. <laughs> and I've spent a lot of time thinking if it's either that match or the Lights Out match, which is my favorite match of the night. And I think this one just steals it by like a point if I was doing like a grading of it. Like this... Well- Osprey and Osprey, Pac. the current best United Kingdom wrestler in the world, versus yes. Pac, <laughs> formerly the greatest United Kingdom wrestler in the world. Yes. Um, this match was insane mm-hmm. yes. in all the right ways. <laughs> like this. Oh Jesus Christ, dude! I like, it's like this it's match like, is just insane. Imagine, it's just a really good spot fest, and I mean that in a an excellent way. Like. This match was about as British wrestling as British wrestling can get. Yeah. And Osprey and Pop just laid it all out there. This was British wrestling by way of Lucha Libre. Yeah. Like it 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 is. Uh we made a joke too. Uh so the bell rings and they have the same kind of energy as Danielson and Kenny Omega got. The crowd just is already into this match before they even grapple up. And we joke, it's like Man, we know that Ricochet is like watching this shit and getting hyped up. And then the camera cuts the Ricochet in the back. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, there is no actual fucking way (laughs) that That it just cut to him doing that shit. Um, I think one of my favorite moments in the there's a ton of favorite moments in this was after their first like brief exchange. Will Ospreay just gets up, tells Pac to get up, and then they just start beating the shit out of each other. It's not even like flippy shit anymore. It's just them hitting each other. Yep. And I was just like, oh, it's so good. There were so many counters in this match from (laughs) Pac. Like, just some of the smoothest fucking counters I've ever seen to flippy moves. There was some great technical work. There was some great uh, high-flying stuff. Um, This is, yeah. um, These guys just pretty much brought Dragon Gate to AEW. and uh, Yeah. Yeah, It was just fantastic. (laughs) I, I, mean, I can't even describe all the stuff that I saw between these two because there was just so much of it. It was I didn't, so much I didn't back and write forth. notes. There was a lot of back and I forth. Think, uh, I, mean, I will like... say, I, like, I, I feel like I OD'd a little bit on it. Um, and it kind of got to be much. Like, you know, they had, the, they had the moment where they're like beating each other and then they went back to Flippy. And I was like, I, I like hmm. when, and then I like when they did the Sky Twister presses on each other. That was fun. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, uh yeah it's like it, they did that um other moments like they osprey i think caught pack but then he converted it to like a good ddt into a liger bomb and then out of nowhere they hit like the spanish fly when packs coming in at him there's the yes. fucking apron suplex into the poison rana on that was osprey crazy. <laughs> uh there's the poison rana into the hidden blade. And then there was this whole exchange at the end. This like avalanche poison rana, which he landed. They did the landing spot that they did back from New Japan. Hits mm-hmm. him with a hidden blade. Pack sells it like he's been shot. Like the man just goes down. <laughs> he kicks out. And then they do another exchange where 
Pack hits the uh, flip on him to go for the pinning predicament, and it converts into a Styles Clash into a Hidden Blade. And I was like, what a good fucking exchange to end this match on. <laughs> and you hear the crowd too, somebody posted a clip of it, uh, when he picks him up, the crowd yells Styles Clash before he even, like, sets it up. And it's just like, just again, this crowd made this fucking pay-per-view. Uh, so much better. And it's just so funny because it's like Chicago loving AEW. It's like CM Punk's punching at the air right now. <laughs> Honestly, that man is swinging at the air. Uh, yeah, I I need these two to run it back at some point. I need these two to have a triple threat with Ricochet. I need to see more of whatever this shit is because I need this in my veins. <laughs> I think the triple threat with Ricochet would cook, though. Uh, the, so after the match, uh, he goes to the back, he's celebrating, and he sees Ricochet, he's like, Hey, Ricochet, what have you done lately? Like his third yeah, day. Yeah, Rick- he tells Ricochet to, uh, if he wants to title, to start getting some wins. And now we're getting yeah, Ricochet, a Ricochet like, versus... Don't worry about me! And now we're getting Ricochet versus Sammy Guevara tonight. So... <laughs> I think oh, that boy. match that match also has the potential to be a sleeper. Honestly, Sammy can do some that, crazy flippy shit too. That so, match can cook. We'll see if that it match can cook. It the the oven is preheating. We'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta make sure you uh, gotta make sure it beeps before you put the food in. I mean, this people had thoughts when Osprey came in and went right for Swerve's title. And then, you know, they put Swerve over. It's like, hey, I'm here to prove that I'm willing to work with the company. I'm not here to take anybody's spot, mm-hmm. you know, and it just even the MJF view, it's just Will has not lost any momentum at all in this company. Like he has just kept the crowd engaged. He has just kept everything just rising and rising. He's going to be a world champion at some point. Yeah, they're pretty much like, building him to be the centerpiece of this company at this point. And that's what they should be doing with Lost Ray, you know. A guy his caliber should have occupied at least one of the top spots in the company. You know, it just wasn't his time yet because, you know, this was Swerve's one. And Swerve had a fantastic one as AEW World Champion. So the, for them to interrupt that with Osprey right now was just not good timing. And, um, yeah, I just think I, eventually they're going to get around to it. I will say uh, Osprey versus Danielson, anyone? I think that Part could two? be I think that could be what they're building to is. Mm-hmm another Danielson Osprey and you know building on that storyline of how he hurt Danielson and stuff like yeah. that I think before we get that we probably see will Osprey lose the international championship to either Pack or Ricochet whatever storyline they want to build coming out of this it's leaning more towards Ricochet but uh, yeah maybe I, I think that Will's going to get a lengthy uh, international championship run though Probably yeah. Not on par with Orange Cassidy. I don't think another run that long uh, will probably be good unless there's, you know, a good amount of defenses like they did with the Cassidy story. But, yeah, will either next year or the year after, like, he deserves a title, a world title run. He has just kept that fire, like, behind his arrivals just burning. It's been so good. And next we have... This Statlander versus Nightingale. Nobody would thought this match would cook, and by God, they burned the kitchen down. <laughs> like it's How? This... these two have such good chemistry together. How these would two... it not cook? It's so, the misogyny, people. So people like everybody was like, "This match is a street fight. It's going to be you know kind of a mess or whatever." And I'm like, "No." They watched Pack and Will Osprey and said, "We have to do better." Yes. And they were just oh, yeah. they went out there and they fucking laid it on it... the line. And this match and was so fucking good. This was the better women's match of this pay-per-view by yes. far. And uh, Chris and Willow are just really good together. You know, as friends, as enemies, you know, they just have such good chemistry. And you can't really teach the fuck them. out of each other. They also, want to, sh- each other. want to shout out Willow not being uh, a hangman page and actually being a ruthless baby face because she knows she has to be. Yeah. Like, hangman's like, I'm trying to be the good guy. Willow's like, I'm going to fucking kill this bitch. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Uh, yeah. so they chase uh they chase Stokely out pretty early in this match, so it removes that and lets these two just go at it one on one. Uh, I mean we get tables, barricades, glass tubes, chains, tacks. Uh, Statlander doing it for the love of the game. Uh, the, the pouring out the tax, trying to hit the splits on Willow. Willow moves. She splits onto the tax. 
Chris Statlander for the love of the game. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, she did also eat a glass tube, uh, a few glass tubes to the head uh, at the top of the ramp. Uh, so she's wrestling this kind of not busted open, but she's bleeding. There is a really good. Uh, she eats the Death Valley driver, I think, also onto the tax. We were talking about, too, because this was originally advertised as the CMLL uh, Women's Championship. And they started the match, but they made no mention of the CMLL title at all. Uh, they didn't get it, didn't even come out with it. No. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, okay, so if... That's, but then I looked up that Willow was advertised for another show. Like, uh, just uh, like in a week or two or something. And I'm like, okay, so we're moving the stip here. Kind of spoils it that Willow's losing. They can't put it on stat because Willow's going to be at this event. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, so I understand they're removing the stipulation. I'm glad they did also didn't bring much attention to it. I didn't think people, they didn't mention it on commentary. So it's just kind of like, I guess people just didn't think about it. They did a really good job of covering like the elephant in a the room there about why is this no longer a title match. Which is fine because I don't think you want Willow, you know, losing the title to Statlander and Statlander having to go there anyway. You know, nothing against her. It's just I think CMLO had a clear plan for Willow Nightingale in that title. So they pretty much changed the stip they changed much changed the stipulation, made it a Chicago street fight. Also it allows Statlander to get her win back against Willow. Yeah. And everything works out. Also, uh it should, this match also shows that Willow is just a fucking tank of a woman. There's the oh, there's sure. the table yeah. spot where she gets out of the way of the table, but still gets fucking nailed by Chris's legs when she comes down and she's just like shakes it off and keeps going. And I'm like, God damn, Willow. <laughs> like these women can just these women can handle these kind of matches. And it's just so good. This is just we pointed out earlier, uh, Willow uh, went against the barricade or something. And they asked like the guy in the audience, like, are you good? Because the barricade gave pretty easily. And we were like, that seems important. And then when Satlander went through it later, they had moved everybody out of that section. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it was a gimmicked barricade. That's why it did that earlier. Yeah. So it was just really cool. Like, moved all those fans too, though. They probably just had him back up. Yeah. There might have also been people there for you know the company, like brought it, like given tickets or something. It's just they're like, just, hey, at this yeah, point, at this point, just get get back, you know. Uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely plants. A really good pound, so to send Chris through the barricade. I love this presentation of Willow being like the strong woman of the division, and it's just it's so. I mean, she's so popular with the fans too. Like the crowd loves her, and I'm just like Tony, just just keep it going. Like you have a star here. He has a future. World, he has a future in women's world champion right there. You know, and I think we're getting to that point with Willow. Um, just a few more match. I think she just needs to finish this feud with Statlander. Just have a few more good matches. I can kind of see her being world champion. Probably not this year, but next year at some point. And I mean, she's been doing a lot of like PR stuff for the company too. Yeah, like sh her and Swerve and, you know, people that do all the PR like they're they're perfect in those roles, like they're perfect to be the faces of the company. Um, And it's just like. It's uh, AEW has had this issue with these younger stars where it's like they'll they'll get them going and then either something will happen where they're out of the feud or you know, they get injured or something like with powerhouse Hobbs who was at all out. They did show him like sitting, standing in the crowd and everything watching. So he's on a timetable to coming back. And I'm hoping that he's they can kind of, trying... they can get him back into the rotation of things because he has star power behind him too. They yeah, they're probably trying him, to get him cleared. They had him and Eddie Kingston on an anti-suicide uh, thing. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that too. It was uh, really good. It was really good. I mean, Eddie, you can have Eddie do anything, and I mean he'll be honest, and like that's just the kind of guy he is. And we need him Eddie's back. Just Eddie. He needs to call Claudio a snake. He needs to take Wheeler Yuta and be like, "You're my son now." And then they need to beat the shit and out of Claudio. Need, and people need to apologize to Eddie Kingston because he was right. Day one of Claudio the there, he's like, "Claudio's a fucking snake," <laughs> and he was right. Let's let's be real. Eddie Kingston calls everybody a snake just because no. he's right one time. I do feel yeah, sorry. Does. I do feel He's sorry for right, Eddie, though. though. Uh, he did. It doesn't matter. Eddie has asked in the past if he could set somebody on fire 
or do the Terry Funk bag spot that they do later in the night. And uh, Tony's always told him no. So somebody like drew a cartoon of him sitting at home on his couch, pissed off because they do that in two different (laughs) (laughs) pay-per-views. And I'm like, Eddie's going to come back and actually set somebody on fire with that gas can from that one uh, anarchy in the arena match. Um, Yeah, a great street fight, though. Like this, yeah. these women were great. Chris does get her win back, uh, but I don't feel I don't feel like this is the end of the feud. But I mean, it's definitely added some so much needed fire, I think, to the women's division in general, uh, in terms of like rivalries. Because I think we have this: we have Thunder Rosa and uh, Bizarro, and we have Tony Storm and Mariah May. Whenever Tony Storm comes back, like we're actually getting these like long term rivalries uh, with people. Oh, and then the tease. The tease. This Continental Championship four-way match where you know exactly what the crowd wants the moment you have Takeshita and Okada in that ring alone. Yep. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I have never seen Orn Cassidy get booed before. <laughs> but he got in between them and the crowd booed Orange Cassidy because they wanted to see this shit. And that was uh, primary the reason for everybody watching this match, which I'll get to that in a little bit. I think when the C2 comes back, I think they're going to pull the trigger on Takeshita. Yeah. I think it's time. You know, I th- there has been interviews where he's been vocal. It's like, I feel like he feels like a native born, like Japan, Japanese wrestlers don't get a fair shake of things because there's like language barriers and. You know, stuff like that. And I'm like, prove him wrong, man. The crowd loves Takeshita. Like, the guy showed up, put on fucking bangers with Moxley, Danielson, Hangman. And it's just kind of like he's been with Don Callis and it's like, you get him out of there. Just let him reign. <laughs> like, please. Um, If they were smart, I would try to start this feud as soon as possible. Get it going for either Wrestle Dream or Full Gear. You know, this would be a perfect a story to tell with these two. Yeah, this would be a perfect a story to tell match. with these two. Like, yeah. Um, perfect Wrestle Dream match. But yeah, this match itself, uh, Kazuchika Okada, Orange Cassidy, Mark Briscoe, and Kanosuke, uh, Kanosuke Takeshita. Uh, everybody gets their showing in, but they do really focus this match on Takeshita, and they give him you know time alone with Okada. And it just feels like this was, hey... You guys remember Takeshita? We're bringing him back to you. Like it's, it felt like that. Uh, there was a real funny moment though, because you do have Mark Briscoe and Orange Cassidy in here, kind of being like the comedy duo. Uh, in addition to all of it, you have you then have them doing their like cactus jack, like elbow drops off the apron, and then Orange Cassidy does like the lazy one, <laughs> he does the gun fingers, and like walks over and just elbow drops Okada. There was the uh, spot in the middle of the ring where briscoe and orange do like the lazy strikes then they high five and then they just start actually fighting each other and it popped the crowd i like it i liked it i liked it too it's just the the high five and then just the elbow strikes starting to hit each other uh i don't know just takesha's character work at times too is great because there was this time where him and okada were trading blows and he takes a really good forearm and he just kind of shakes it off and like readjusts his jaw and then hits Okada again. And I'm like, it's those little things that he knows how, what to do, you know? He like just looks dead at the hard cam, just <laughs> fixes the jaw, hits Okada one more time. Yep. And it's just Okada's uh, fucking uh, drop kicks, dude. They're so yeah, good. Best, best ones in the industry. I liked this match. I. Um, I think everyone got their got time in to do their stuff. Oh, absolutely. Um, it was, uh, which is all you can ask for multi man matches. That doesn't really it, like it doesn't happen super often in in other matches, um, even in like singles matches. <laughs> um, so it, it's good to see uh, everyone got a little something in, and we got the 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 seeds planted for uh, mm-hmm. Takeshita versus Okada, which should just burn the house down i feel like if you advertise it at like wrestle dream or even what wrestle dynasty in japan the yes you know, the, i, the I think it'd be a good wrestle dynasty just that's uh, a marquee match right 
yeah. in Japan, yeah. just Basically. Okada versus Takeshita. Like that's everybody who knows DDT in New Japan. It's just like you do that in Japan for a title, and I'm like that. That sells the pay per view for the Japanese audience right there. I think. I mean, yeah, it's like what. It's three or four months to build, but I would think it'd be worth to just have that match. It's, uh, Janu- honestly, January, yeah, be so, a much yeah. bigger stage. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would, I would see that working. Yeah, it. I feel like that just that's a marquee match, you know. It is just, it would be so good. And I mean, these two guys are such great wrestlers that I feel like they don't. Even if they didn't have like the perfect chemistry, they could put on a match that people would still, you know, fucking love. And then we get our next match for the TBS championship. I feel like they always position these matches weird on the card. Like it's always like one match later than I feel like it should be. Uh, with these TBS matches, I think the last, uh, pay-per-view, the last event did that too. Uh, after watching this match, while Mercedes is not entirely to blame, I think Brit did. Uh, contribute to the quality of that match because Sheeta uh, made tried to make this match as best as she fucking could. I think. I'm starting to feel like literally killing Monet at some point. I feel like Mercedes Monet is a good wrestler, but she's not a great wrestler. And I feel like yeah, the caliber of fine. the caliber of opponents sometimes can make these matches hit or miss. Okay, and um, as much as like Mercedes Monet, her, I could say this about her one in AEW so far, because like her one in AEW has been very 50 50 at best. I mean, sometimes she's good and sometimes it's just awful, and most I mean, of the yeah. times when it's awful, it comes on the pay per view. I mean, yeah, the match you with know, Willow was good, the match with it, uh, with Stephanie was good, the match with Britt was eh, and then you get the best Sheeta, which is great at times. Mm-hmm. Like it's just been a, such a weird. Was it? Wasn't Britt Baker like sandbagging that match though? Oh, she it, it probably. So the, the there's a lot that can be speculated about that match, but after watching like Sheeta and Mercedes, I can kind of see where Mercedes like weaknesses are. I think it's just general like strength, but I do feel like Britt was probably making that match harder than it needed to be. Yeah, because I mean, because I'm not saying that this match was bad per se, but you know. She did make this match a little better, but at the same time, I really feel like that this was one of the weakest matches on this card. It probably it was the weakest match on this card. She had tried her best. Hard. She had tried her best to have Mercedes wrestle a New Japan match, and I just don't think Mercedes was getting the message. Mercedes you know? not feeling it for sure. Um, and on the, top of that, you know, it it just feels like everybody else in this women's division is sort of outshining her as well. So I don't know what's going on. I hope it gets better for Mercedes at some point, but. I think she really just has to step it up, you know. Uh, I, I don't know, because it's just I, like it just to me, it just feels like the rest of the women's division is just kind of shadowing her right now. I think in the WWE, she was a big fish in a small pond and now she's a small fish in a big pond. Yeah, I think like, that's oh. a perfect summary because she was one of what, 12, 13, 14 women mm-hmm. on WWE's total roster. And now it's like we have this stacked as fuck roster from women of all body sizes hey, hey. wrestling styles previous promotions and it's like yeah you're you're not top shit here like yeah <laughs> it's like it, it goes to show you just how deep and talented this women's division is though you know it goes to the caliber of talent that they have that just kind of make mercedes monet you know who's supposed to be like one of the biggest stars in the industry just kind of a background for I right say, now i want to say Even we had title uh, at the start of the show, also, I just want to wrap, wrap back around to this because I think it kind of proves this point a little more, too. Uh, we had Mariah May come out. She cut a very heel promo on Chicago. Uh, this was mm-hmm. also during a time of a slightly returning Sky Blue. Sky Blue still has an ankle injury. Uh, but very obviously, Sky Blue is coming back as a face. They're getting her away from Julia Hart's, you know, stable. Influence, um, unfortunately. And Mariah May attacks Sky Blue. And if this was a WWE sized roster and we think of the names of AEW, well, you would think either Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, you know, one of the originals would show up to kind of chase Mariah May off. No, their women roster is so fucking deep. We're getting Queen Amanita, who has been fantastic these last few months. But that just shows it's like we need a good challenger for like this first title, this like first big title defense. 
She's been improving. People love her. She has promise. Showcase her. You know, it's like they don't have to instantly rush back to their top women. They can be like, let's showcase you a little bit and build you up. Because they have that fucking deep of a roster. And it's hey, you fantastic. And hey, you can swing a few ponies at Mariah May before you get to who you who will eventually take the title off of her, which by God, I hope is Jamie Hager. I think they're probably going to build back to Jamie. I think we can probably, we're probably going to go through Queen Amanita and Sky Blue first. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, we'll get Hader back into her spot that was a rob from her from, from injury. Uh, but yeah, so I this match, that. this match, uh, it's an all right match. It's kind of slow compared to, I guess, the pace and intensity of the rest of the card so far. It's definitely a match to like bring people down from. This is definitely the... like we're going to bring down the excitement because we got two matches after this that are going to make you fucking out. We need to reset baseline. Everyone, everyone come back. <laughs> baseline. Um, this is basically a cool down match because yes. the next two the matches thing... after this is this shit. There was obviously a breakdown of, I feel like, what style of match they wanted. I feel like Sheeta wanted probably a New Japan style match, or maybe a Stardom style match, because she knows, like, Mercedes can wrestle that. But mm -hmm. I also feel like Mercedes was might maybe trying to wrestle a very WWE style match, and Sheeta was just not used to that. So I feel like there was a breakdown of what match they were trying to go for, uh, which probably led to why Sheeta completely just fucking nails Mercedes with a katana later in the match. It's like, you hear it, there's no thigh slap. Like, Sheeta's just like, what the no crap? I, I, I looked back at it, there is the motion of thigh slap, but God, that looked like, that looked like impact all the way. Oh, and she cracked the, her jaw with that one. Yeah, and then the camera angle they have when Sheeta goes to like pick her up, you see Mercedes like talking to her. And this is where the match kind of gets weird because you have this actual like kind of match going on. And then it's like, it turns into like, she just trying to do something, but Mercedes doesn't want her to. And Mercedes gets out of the ring and it's like, there's this breakdown of communication. And then the end just like shows up and like the finish happens. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wonder if Mercedes just wants to get out of that fucking ring since she maybe just like clocked her in the jaw with a fucking roundhouse. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like they didn't know what they... Uh... I think they couldn't agree what the finish would be. Or maybe yeah. there was a time thing that was happening. It's like, all right, we're going to go for the finish, but I just, I don't know. Like, you can see Mercedes trying to communicate to Sheeta after that katana mm -hmm. hit. And, uh, yeah, I was talking next. I was like, this is just, this feels weird now. Like, I just don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know if Mercedes is like going into business for herself or if there's just like a huge breakdown of what the plan is. I have no idea, but it, it just, I guess it just is just a breakdown in communication. Or this also shows the crowd. Know. This also shows the crowd though is still very much behind Sheeta. Like the crowd mm -hmm. loves yes. Sheeta. She's going to be a stable member of this fucking roster. Yeah, she's, I don't think that she's the Orange Cassidy. Like everybody's gonna fucking yeah. love her all the time. Yeah, and on top of that, I don't think there's, I don't think there was too much heat between Sheeta or uh, Mercedes. I haven't heard anything post match about that. So I don't know. Maybe yeah. it was just like a small error in communication or whatnot. But it, it was just a weird finish. And you have to, you have I don't to keep think mind, they also speak very different languages. So yeah, like, yeah. Well, that's obviously. what I'm saying. I think there was probably like a language breakdown, but like. If you go and watch this match, after that like hard katana hit, the match just like feels weird. Like they don't know, like two people are trying to wrestle two different plans, and neither of them are like getting on the same page as each other. Uh but yeah, so uh Mercedes hits the moneymaker and retains the title. Uh do want to shout out Sheeta here. She was wearing the uh cat head like thigh highs. I was like, that's adorable, actually. <laughs> that, She's... that she does embracing her inner e-girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd love Sheeta. I mean, I just wish she had her to get a title reign. That means fucking something once in a while. <laughs> uh, but yes, this was definitely the cooldown match because God for this next hour, it just shit does not stop. <laughs> like, uh, 
we move into Brian Danielson versus Jack Perry for the AEW World Championship. Jesus Christ, yep. everybody who hates Jack Perry can shut the fuck up. This man wrestled his ass off in this fucking this is, match. This is another testament to Brian Danielson bringing the level of everybody he wrestles up. And I just don't think it's that. I think like Jack Perry was like, fuck the haters. I'm going to show them some I, shit tonight. I, think, I do think Jack Perry met him halfway, but I think it's, yeah. it's Danielson like mo- like moving up the, the entry, the bar to entry. Yeah. Uh, also, also, this pay per view took place in Chicago, and Jack Perry just ate this crowd. I mean, he just oh, ate yeah. off of this crowd's energy. He really did. Because yeah. I mean, he was just being such a dick out there, and I loved it. They get the uh, SWAT team escort again, like they did at a uh, Windy City Riot uh, a few months back. Uh, yeah, Chicago fucking hates Jack. They love Danielson. This is a great face heel dynamic that's going on right now. And this is, again, just a great fucking technical wrestling match between these two. Uh, And then when it, you know, when it hits the ground running, Jack also sells his fucking ass off for Danielson. I mean, if you've been on Twitter uh, watching like some of these gifts, like I don't know how Jack can get hit by the psycho knee like that and move in that direction from that hit. Like he's hit and he ends up on the other side of the fucking ring. It looks so good, too. It does. Like, it just really does sell his ass off, man. So kudos to Jack Perry, man. I, I, I like the guy. I really do. I think there was the I, uh, the spot that I think made me like... The only part that made me really win, winch in this match was the butterfly suplex uh, to Jack onto the fucking ground of the ring. Like, yeah. outside of the ring. I was like, God, that yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a butterfly suplex. It looks nasty. Yeah, so this, uh, how long was this match? Do you have the wiki open? Yes, I do. It was like 27 minutes. 27. So yeah, about, what is it? About, uh, almost 30 minutes. Probably about probably 20... 30 minutes plus intro. Yeah, so probably about near the end, uh, the Bucks come out to try to interfere. Claudio and Wheeler jump them. Uh, at the end of it, Jack's losing. He does his pose on his knees, eats up a psycho knee, and gets pinned. Just defiant to the end. Uh, I like with a it. smile on his face, too, which was just a great fucking image. I mm-hmm. like it specifically in this match. I do think it's not not that it's overused, but it's I remember when Orange Cassidy did it. So yeah, like, just the so just looking at Moxley, the, the, the flicking him off. Out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Flicks yeah. him off, uh, eats into Death Rider, loses the international title. Yeah, I just, I, I remember, uh, you know, I can remember the last person who used it is kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. I hope it doesn't happen that frequently that there's another scapegoat who's like, please kill me. Put me no, out of my misery. I, moments like that do really sell it. Uh, I think I was talking to X about it just off, like, off topic about it. It's like WWE figured out one really cool entrance shot with like following them from the back. It was a really cool thing to see. And now they just do it on every show. And it's like, God damn it, guys. You've Way literally like, magic. Yeah, you've run it into the ground already. <laughs> um, Post-match, Christian Cage hits uh, hits with his music. He attempts to cash in. Moxley arrives. BCC joins back up. Uh, they protect Danielson. Uh, Christian Cage leaves. And then in the middle of their celebration... Claudio hits Danielson with an uppercut. The crowd legitimately shocked. Pack goes to restrain Wheeler, and Moxley begins to choke him with a plastic bag, a la Terry was, Funk. Was it a Ziploc bag, if I remember correctly? Yeah, he's, like using, it, bag. he's using Danielson's enemy plastic. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, people... <laughs> There's 50-50 people. Some people loved this for the shout out to the classic. Some people fucking hated this angle. And most oh, of those no. guys were the over 50 or 60 year old wrestlers. No, no. <laughs> and even that, to your point, um, there were fans actually when they saw this. this they were recording hurt. videos on Twitter calling for W uh, Warner Brothers Discovery to cancel AEW and cancel the TV deal because they were upset about the events that happened. Okay, yeah. this actually happened. I saw a couple of these videos and I couldn't have died anymore laughing at those. Also, this is the next match. 
this was the moment of the night too where we don't know if jr was still in character or had completely dropped character Jim Ron, oh yeah like, apoplectic the whole time he's like, just I, like I, you don't need this in professional wrestling i'm like is this it's like, is he still in character because he sounds like legitimately no, pissed off <laughs> he might have been legitimately pissed off i don't know man but it's like when jr was just on there i was like hey i, I can't tell if he's serious or not because he really put some emotion into this like, he was, yeah. like he was like going full goddamn karen out there if, if jr is if jr was not legitimately pissed off and he was still in character man deserves like all the accolades he sold this shit like it was the worst thing to ever fucking happen to somebody that yeah. man is 72 years old his character is he's him that's fair uh, yeah what it really I think sells this angle is Wheeler at the end of it all uh, as Moxley is choking out Danielson and Pac has him restrained I mean the camera focuses on Wheeler and he's calling out for Claudio you know, he looks fucking devastated. And I'm like, is I is this the start of like Wheeler's arc to becoming like one of their, you know, auxiliary pillars, basically. Like we have the four pillars, but we have all these young guys off also onto the side. I'm like, this is fucking Wheeler's time, you know, in this story to really come out on his own as a character again. Wheeler's uh, emotion during that like he sold that shit by so Taco well. Really good. Yeah, he that, he's that really man is sold going to acting. Actually, he yeah. sold the betrayal like so so well. But see, yeah, and then like my question now is: and what they happens with the trio titles? I, I don't know with the trio titles though. Can I also point out like, they don't stretch her out, Danielson? They just carry no, they them. Just, the they just carry him. <laughs> off. I'm like, didn't y'all have a medical team with a stretcher somewhere? I just felt like I'm that like, was kind of weird. Also. I'm like, bro, you really want to sell this medical angle? Get the stretcher. Don't carry him out like he's a drunk guy at a concert. <laughs> like, yeah. well, look, it's just oxygen loss. He didn't like break his neck or anything this time. So uh, also, they, can, they uh, can carry him out. It's with fine. how the bag was going in and out, I'm not sure if Danielson could actually breathe or if it was just like, oh shit, Moxley's actually fucking strangling me by accident. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to break the illusion for those of you who who want. I saw like he was clamping want. it, so I'm pretty sure he had like an opening. Well, he's, he he's holding it like right here. Yeah, so it was he had control of where where it is. Like they didn't in a safe manner, but it just looked like you know Moxley was trying to commit felony murder on live now. <laughs> I mean, the cr- yes. I mean the crowd, you the know. crowd was also chanting, "This is murder." <laughs> yes. yes, yes, they were. And I'm like, yeah. God, I love the wrestling community. We're so unserious. There's a guy being choked <laughs> out with a plastic bag, and we're chanting, "This is murder." <laughs> like, He's committing a felony on camera. He all are chanting, "This is murder." I think what also sells this too about Moxley's new character is that he looks so bored doing it. Like Moxley had like no emotion when he was choking it's, it's, out Danielson. He looked like it was a Asian thing to 47. do. Yeah, he's like seeing that he had, you know like, he always has his gum, so he's like looking around just like casually chewing. I'm like, this man is unbothered by what he is doing <laughs> right now. And uh, yeah, it puts the trios titles into a weird uh, situation, which I think is going to focus on Wheeler. Like, whose side are you on? Yeah, I think ultimately this probably comes down to. Ack, Claudio, Moxley, and maybe Darby, depending on whatever he wants Darby for still, against mm-hmm. Danielson, Wheeler, and maybe Eddie Kingston when he comes back. Because there well, is also lead, that respect well, my between question those two. With this whole thing is, would this lead to a Darby heel turn at some point? Would I would Darby love, to, I would love to see a Darby heel turn. The man's been a face the whole time. <laughs> like, yeah, because he's been, yeah, the whole run of AEW, he's been a face, so I just thought that'd be kind of interesting, you know. I mean, maybe he can get to Moxley, and you know, Moxley offers him to join him, and he says no, and then we get Wheeler, Darby, Danielson against, you know, BCC. I just I think it's gonna be really hard to make Darby a heel. I don't think the crowd's gonna fucking let you. I don't think they like, are either. But I don't think you're allowed yet. Yeah, I also I also can't boo a man who's like goes out there and it's like I might die tonight and then dives out of the fucking ring at 20 miles an hour <laughs> to hit somebody with a crossbody. A ghost through a glass pane from 20 feet off a ladder. Yeah. It wasn't it was like the moment Darby was injured and had to get out of a ring. He was hit by a bus. The man's safest place is in that wrestling ring. <laughs> like, yeah. So. So that is the end of the official card. Because the final match is a non-sanctioned match. 
Steel Cage, Lights Out, match four of the rivalry between Hangman, Adam Page, and Swerve Strickland. Uh, how did we get to this point? It involved a house burning down. That's where we are at this point in the feud. Uh, people are also really fucking stupid because it's like Hangman burned down the wrong house and it's like, you know, houses have multiple sides to them, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's some, it's, it's the same from the different angles. And somebody yeah. debunked this on Twitter already. They circled the parts of the house. Yeah, they're like, here's you know the front. The same house. It's like, here's the shrub. Here's the railings you can kind of see over here. And then it's like, here's the side house. Here's the railings. Here's the shrub. This is the same house. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Hangman crossing the moral event horizon, burning down Swerve's childhood home while sitting in his dad's recliner, sipping whiskey, which is a hard as fuck image. And I did, in fact, make it my fucking wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this I got definitely paid. Oh, is the hardest image. Oh, sweet. I got paid. Uh, but yeah, like, it fits perfectly on my phone. Like, yeah, this yeah. image goes hard as fuck. <laughs> this is going to be yes. one of wrestling's, like, classic <laughs> images. It's going to be like the Mick Foley being thrown off the cage photo. Yeah. Like, this is that. That's going to live to that level. It's so fucking good. Um, They get out there. Nana, completely serious doing the dance, is my favorite comedy It's just act. like this. He's oh god, I love. He's Nana. dead ass, just staring down Hangman the whole time he's doing. Nana this. got a uh, number one in <laughs> PWI's five hundred, didn't he too? Or he, he got did. The, like, he got, he, yeah. got he, he got the number one manager, which nice. the guys fucking earned it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, the cage is coming down. Hangman's in the ring. Swerve does not fucking wait. The cage isn't even down yet, and these two are starting to beat the shit out of each other. Uh. And then they're laying on the apron. Swerve's ready for that cage to come down and crush Hangman. <laughs> like He was going to decapitate Hangman. It was almost like when uh, Seth Rollins almost accidentally died during the cage match because he was underneath it, like trying to get the thing into the ring and the fucking spike was coming down. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that clip. Uh, yeah, Seth Rollins almost like completely got impaled by a cage in WWE because he wasn't paying fucking attention. I think I remember that, yeah. Um... They try to crush each other with a cage. Nana's outside throwing in tables, weapons, toolboxes. He's like filling the ring for when the cage comes down. And we're like three minutes in once the cage is down and the staple guns out. And we're back to we're back to that callback. And S- Swerve's fucking pain tolerance is enviable. This man just eats staples to the chest like they're nothing. Uh and yeah, it just it just goes crazier and crazier from there. This fucking match rocked. <laughs> like oh good. This was a great way to get Swerve uh, off TV for a bit so he can you know take a break. He had a great world title run and all that. Uh, this the ending of the show has Hangman looking remorseful. And I don't know if it was a plant in the audience or if it was a legitimate reaction, but he looks like so regretful about what he's done that he makes his way back to the ring and somebody in the crowd screams. And I don't know if that's a plant or if that's just like somebody's reaction to it, but it just helps sell that moment of Hangman realizing I'm a fucking monster. You know, he so to zoom out a little bit, he tried going. He was going to go through the babyface tunnel. Oh, yeah, he, the he hesitated the and then he went through the, the and then he went through the heel tunnel. This was after uh after the show went off the air was, though, because the, the card ends with him it. losing his mind on the Just camera. Like crazy. He shoved a hi- he shoved a hypodermic needle into Swerve's mouth, so you know. Yes. After taking off his grill by yes. head. So yeah, we had staple guns. Uh the cinder block is something that X and I had discussions about because it didn't give like hard rubber so so we're like okay is this the same kind of cinder block that they did the stomp with to uh, keely and then they like power bombed onto it and it didn't give and i'm like oh okay these guys are actually just fucking having a solid not real but a solid cinder block i don't know this fucking thing was I, it, it looks realistic. I couldn't tell if it, it was looks real so or realistic, not, and it scraped up it, Hangman's back like realistic. And it scraped so. him like and Swerve took a nasty power bomb on that as well, and it just 
it did not budge one it's, bit. It, so it seemed to be hard plastic of some kind. It, yeah, it, was, yeah. it looked it much was lighter than an actual cinder block because those things don't move very. Easily. If that was hard. That was a really hard plastic that's, though, and it's. Really I think good. that's what. I think that's what got us too, because like after he hit him and like he like just like pushed it aside with his foot, like it was no, like issue. So yeah. I was like, okay, so it's not real. Right. It's just it, it's, it's definitely just really something smooth. else, but it's just it's sturdy. It is a sturdy yeah. cinder block. They did not use it if because if they were going to use it to stop, it would have just like collapsed instantly. Yeah, it would have just but, broken on the first. first but they thing. used it to power bomb on, and they knew what was up. Um, uh, I will also say the hypodermic needle is probably that thing where you like you know you syringe a little bit of your skin and you like pull it yeah, back. That's what people were saying. Is it the needle? It wasn't a full needle. I mean, it was probably a needle on the end, but it like probably could be pushed into the actual tube, you know, yes. and it was suction. Probably I was holding it in place. It was suction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then and the last thing I'll say is the unprotected chair shot. Yes, they're still bad. Yes, they still hurt. That chair shot was that chair was gimmicked to shit. That chair was gimmicked to shit. Uh, it, it, it was it was it, it was made so basically it was collapsible. Like when you hit somebody in the yeah, head, it would just it, fold immediately. Yeah, so. the chair base folded open. I mean, it's still hard plastic so taking a chair shot it probably still isn't good for you but because of the material the gimmick the visual of it just looked so brutal too it did um, and the, the the pan back the pan they cut it perfectly like right as it's about to hit they do the wide shot so you yeah. hear the impact you hear the impact and you hear the crowd and you see swerve go down and this match is this match ends by Swerve being knocked out. Hangman still has not technically beaten Swerve. Swerve never gave in. The only reason the match ended is because Swerve was literally knocked the fuck out. Yeah. But see, it, 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 how far can they go with this, man? Like, this is, uh, honestly, this is AEW's greatest feud in this company's history. Oh, absolutely. But my question is now, how much more could they do to each other? You know what this feud reminds me? You know shoot feud... each other in the, in the middle of the ring. This feud reminds me of early AEW when Moxley just showed up and I think it was the second dynamite he he death riders Kenny through a fucking table yeah and I'm like I think that's the last time we've had a feud like this heated that wasn't MJF and CM Punk or and I think like when it gets to just the brutality of it I think Moxley and Kenny were the last two to really hit like this with the exception of maybe 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 Darby and Christian. I I will say I do think that um, with with Swerve reportedly taking a leave of absence, that I think this is like it for the feud for now. Yeah, I think they, uh, I think they have a good spot where they can fight, kind of fight forever. Yeah. Um, I think it's whenever I think it's, it's one of those whenever it's relevant. That, yeah, I think it's like you know Sammy and Ko are always just like one interaction away from like fighting each other. I think that's what this feud is going to be. Yeah, yeah um, and, I, and I'm almost certain they're gonna pick this back up at some other point. But for now, I think they're gonna just focus on Hangman going after the world title eventually, yes. which that's gonna be a convoluted mess considering what we just saw in All Out. Uh, well, I think Christian it's gonna be a whole net contract. I think it's gonna build up to it. Uh, yeah. I don't think he's back in the picture immediately. I think we're probably gonna get you know a little bit of time of Hangman like just losing more of his mind uh, and probably oh, yeah, going like full, crazy, full crazy hangman. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, he'll get into whatever title picture he's into and then maybe swerve costs him there and we run it back. But I was saying like, this was the thing during attitude era with these rivals. I cannot wait for the inevitable swerve hangman tag team run. <laughs> it's just like, I need somebody who's as crazy of a motherfucker as me. You. <laughs> it's like, we need to do. I was like, just give me a whatever tag team run. They can hate each other. I just want to see that fucking shit on TV. <laughs> like, it'd be, make little, that, it'd, be, it'd be like the Austin and Shawn Michaels thing when they held the tag titles back in like it'd be like ninety seven. No, it'd be like Austin and Kurt Angle. I think like it yeah. could go. It could probably go into that level of like comedy too between these two. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm actually you guys are forgetting the two man power trip. Uh, Austin and Triple Austin H. and Triple yeah. H. Yeah, where they beat the fuck out of Lita to try to get heel heat. They cheat her. They cheered him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I mean, pay per view ends with Hangman screaming on the top of the ramp, just insane. Like for what he had to do. Uh, this is the 
one of the best like character arcs right now in AEW. Like mm-hmm. if Swerve's out of the picture and Hangman's on his own now, it's just like I can't wait to see what he does with this. Uh I hope Swerve can get can get a break, you know, get some rest. He had a great title run. This was his first, I think, big match after he lost the title. So good way to write him off. Uh but yeah. I mean, this was like half the roster is fucking dead at the end of this. <laughs> Uh, yeah. There's no media scrum uh, for the reason why uh, Tony Khan had to leave to get to Florida uh, for something for like, I think the Jaguars. So he actually couldn't have a scrum, but it really helped sell what the fuck just happened, you know? And the things they didn't even start announcing card matches until last night. So we had Sunday, Monday, in most of Tuesday, where there was just no mention of Dynamite at all. Like, mm-hmm. really. And then the first thing they announce is Moxley live. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, somebody pointed out, I think we should have seen this betrayal come in. Claudio and Moxley came out with the same fit. So. Yeah, yeah. I- <laughs> They did. Before, if I didn't, that know should have been a dead gonna, giveaway, honestly. When I went to watch it again, if I didn't know that they were going to turn on each other, them having the same fit was like, hmm. I the thing is, people are saying that Moxley's new character is based off a Australian movie about a racist, which I'm like, I don't think Moxley would do that. You know, he like kind of fought back against some other worse shit in WWE. But then looking at him and Claudio, I'm like. White t-shirts, the jeans, and all that. I'm like, they kind of look like skinheads. A little so, bit. So, yeah. I'm like, are, are we doing this, <laughs> Moxley? Are we, are we doing this? And uh, I hope, I hope not. <laughs> but who knows? I mean, it's me on this. It's me on this fucking show. I'm always wearing a fucking white t-shirt, and I'm fucking bald as shit. So I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I go to my friend's house. I look like fucking Moxley. In a white t-shirt and jeans with a shaved head. But I love this pay-per-view. It was very good. Um, this pay-per-view I, was so I, good. I enjoyed it. I think I think there was some, like, in the moment, I was like, wow, they're going a little, ooh, maybe a little far with this. But, like, when you stop to think about what they're actually doing when they do their spots and how they're actually protecting each other, even though it looks like they're killing each other, um, you start to think, okay, these guys are fine, whatever. It's not like a CZW thing where they're just like whole hog with like light tubes and shit. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's just so good. What do you yeah, say? Um, I think these people just need to remember that this is still a TV show and they have ways of doing these things in a safe manner that may look realistic, but the talent will be fine, you know, and uh. I just take it for this war. I just take it as that. It's just a TV show, y'all. It's nothing yeah. to take way too seriously. I was talking and, uh, to actually, and um, also, also for this pay per view, um, yeah, th- this was a top notch pay per view from AEW as usual. They never, they almost never miss with these, and uh, this was fantastic. I enjoyed it. And granted, one match, you know, one match here or there, but other than that, I thought this was fantastic. I was actually talking to a coworker earlier uh, in the work day today about wrestling. And he's like, do you like wrestling? And it's like, yeah. And he's like, I think the hardest thing for me watching it is getting it out of my mind that it's not real. You know, like I think like disconnecting from what's real to what's the show. And I'm like, watch it like you're watching an anime or a video game. And it makes wrestling so much better. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to watch it just like to that point of how I watch when it, whenever people get me to watch anime, I'll just turn my brain off and mm-hmm. just engross myself in the story. Yeah, that's I'm how like, you're supposed to watch these things. It's like it's jock theater. Watch it like you're watching fucking Mortal Kombat, the live action show. You know, it's like it. watch it like it, you're watching some sports anime. You know, it's some a wrestling. TV show. Yeah. Also, Tony Khan has made some announcements about uh, about tonight where we're going to have a tag team casino gauntlet match yes it's a ga- it is a casino a casino uh gauntlet match like they do except it is tag teams yes hmm. and i think uh, if they're putting them in there i think we might see the outrunners steal a win tonight uh the outrunners it, are getting a lot of popularity right now it's just gonna be jericho and big bill 
Uh, I think this, them, you know, and I, I love the, the fact that they added Erica Lee to this group. Um, Erica yeah, Lee a, has kind of she's a v, she's VCW. She was a VCW. Yeah, she's, she's uh, been yeah she's been a staple here in VCW for a long time, and uh, I'm just glad she's just getting some TV time. Yeah, you know, that's a, and going Virginia, national. Yeah, it's Virginia Championship Wrestling. Uh, for people, it's uh, the local wrestling group or wrestling promotion here in Virginia where X and I are. Uh, yeah, Erica Lee has always been like advertised as like a, a constant person there. So seeing her on national TV is fantastic. Um, yeah, it, I don't know, man, like this, you have how many weeks until the next, uh, period until the next period for AEW. It's like, where are all these storylines on a fucking go? Oh, they also yeah. announced, uh, they also announced Aminata versus Mariah May today. Okay, so she's just a quick defense. She's just a, just a defense. No, no, no. It's an eliminator match. Oh, okay. Oh, dude. So if, if, she wins, get the win. if she wins, she... well, if she wins, I think it would probably be at, at Grand Slam in Australia. That's true. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. When is Grand Slam anyway? <sighs> Fuck if I know. That is... I really forgot about Grand Slam. I believe that's what we have uh, planned today. Grand Slam pay per view. Uh, it would be. Pay. Was it twenty? That is. Oh my god! It's fucking this month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh you god. thought you were done. You thought you were done. Wait, the twenty fifth. That's a fucking Wednesday. It's a. It's just a random dynamite in in Australia. Is what I think it is. Oh, wait, no. Grand Slam 2024 is the last one in New York. Next year's in February is the stadium show. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so Wednesday, night one, and then Collision will be night two, which will be airing on the 28th. Uh, that's the Danielson versus Darby for the World Championship. Yep. Okay, oh, so okay. That's, that's the TV one. Starting next year, it goes to the stadium show. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, it has been, it has been said, but I think people are still trying to get confirmation. The Warner Brothers deal has been signed, uh, between Tony and Warner Brothers, uh, to put their stuff onto Max. And there is the, uh, Shockwave trademark going around right now that may be on Fox. So people are still looking for a confirmation and stuff, but we may be getting a new show on a different network and we might be getting all their stuff on to max, but that has been unconfirmed. Good. That'll bring AEW to a different audience for once, you know, and uh, uh, hopefully that helps uh, the company grow. I'm definitely into it. Yeah. It was something that was re something that was reported earlier, but nobody's been able to uh, confirm it yet or not. So I'm just going by, I'm saying that's something that's been said. People are still looking for sources. But I wouldn't believe I wouldn't believe I wouldn't it wouldn't be hard to believe that they have signed a deal. I mean, if Warner Brothers wasn't going to renew this, I don't think right now with everything that Warner Brothers is canceling or moving to like streaming, if a fucking wrestling show isn't doing well enough, you, I don't think they wouldn't just be like, now we're dropping you. Like if but if they're talking about actually getting a deal, you know, I can see it. Continuing on, I feel like Warner Bros. wouldn't have an issue dropping them if it wasn't worthwhile for them. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah. So, yeah. Uh, great show. I think we talked about uh, AW just knows how to do fucking pay-per-view wrestling. Yes. Um, right. Whenever it's a pay-per-view, everybody's up on on their game. Um. You know, the dynamites, individual dynamites, uh, collisions, whatever else are middling to whatever. <laughs> um, but their pay per views, they really not like turned up a notch. Yeah. And I think this is a good amount of matches on a card. We've been talking about the last few pay per views. Uh, AW seems to have anywhere between like 10 or 11 matches on their bigger cards. I think they had eight on this one. And I think that's a good number for their pay per views. Uh, especially since they commit to just having the wrestling, it's there's not a lot of time between matches. Mm -hmm. Just eight matches, just through and through for three hours or so. 
three or four hours right. is not a bad number. It's like WWE. I think them finding five matches on their B shows is a good number of matches, like mm-hmm. five or six. So I think they're starting to settle into uh, some good numbers here. I think so. But yeah, we have a uh, Bad Blood next, followed by a Wrestle Dream. And it's interesting. I'm wondering if Bad Blood is going to continue this like, well, we're not watching the NXT shows. So the TNA still will probably go on to NXT, but this TNA NXT partnership has been pretty interesting so far. Alex I was not expecting showed up last night. I was not expecting Alex Hammerstone to show up in fucking NXT. <laughs> oh yeah, like the, the TNA NXT stuff has been it's been really great. You know, it's been, um, it's been beneficial for both companies. Honestly, it uh it puts a spotlight on TNA again. Um. NXT gets their talent, you know, that, you know, they need to get, you know, they just need to fill out. They can get so, them on NXT doing some stuff. It's, uh, it works. It's beneficial. The thing is, I don't think this is a WWE decision. I think both of these companies being owned by TKO, all the TKO boards, like, you're going to cross over, right? <laughs> this is your, this is your get along sweater. Yeah, yeah. It's like the TKO is actually like, so we own two wrestling companies. <laughs> Do you see what we're getting at? And I know Triple H is like sitting there, like he's gripping his paper, like, yes, I know what you're getting at. You know what? Send the NXT well, nerds. Well, <laughs> like, well, TNA, well, TNA isn't per se owned by TKO. They have a streaming deal with TKO though. Yeah, so they, and that's he's on there. But you know, it's the same thing. It's almost like. It's almost like, a part in a way. I like how WWE is like giving into it. It's like send the fucking developmental guys. I don't fucking give a shit. <laughs> like, and then but they yeah, Tavion Heist to Japan. He's and I mean, he he looked fucking great in Japan. Like, mm-hmm. so like, it's it's really weird. We have like these factions of companies now, kind of wrestling together tna wwe and noah and we still have you know cmll new japan aew and it's like no it's just the two sides just together <laughs> so stop where's the where's the bigger get along sweater <laughs> like <laughs> we're about 25 years away from that so tko uh, needs to acquire a few more companies yeah yeah but uh yeah fantastic time for wrestling uh, as we always say uh, as these pay all these events have cna jump in quality that i'm very happy about whenever someone says they want to go back to 2007 no the you fuck do you don't you know you don't you, you know what you we don't. had you know what we had in 2007 we had a, we had a hairy man named albert there was eric bischoff and his nephew eugene we had kevin What's... federline in wwe pinning john cena kevin federline with a clean win over wwe champion john cena we had it's the seven is awful. Oh, seven is awful. <laughs> like, like we had Vince McMahon 2001, 2001, 2001 to 2010. Five. It's just unwatchable. 2005 well, and 2006 no, was good. No, um, <laughs> 2000, like, like the, the ruthless aggression era from like 2002 to 2005 was great. It was Smackdown six era. Yeah, that was really good. Smackdown six era was great. Uh, and then after that, where it's that. like, we have no competition anymore. Yeah, we don't have quality. to try anymore. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of dipped after that. I shouldn't I shouldn't do that on 9-11. Never mind. So yeah. a second so a second joke has hit the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the flow now, unfortunately. God damn um, it. Dude, it's not as bad as the shit that WWE did after all that shit. I think today would be a good day to remind people what the fuck WWE used to be. And it's like, we need to go 20, back. We do not fucking need to go back. 2018, 2019, WWE was the absolute shit. But, I mean, after... That's what led to AEW. In, two, in 2001, after 9-11, we get Muhammad Hassan. You know, let's not go back to old fucking WWE. Let's keep Don't. what we have and be happy with it. Don't like, don't forget not to mention Vince McMahon saying the N word like on a pay per view. Yes, that in was front a, of Booker T. Yeah, that was the whole thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it people are like the the good old days of WWE. It's like the good old days were the Attitude Era. It's from the Attitude Era to where we are now has been yeah. mostly a shit show 
there have been good you, points, but it's mostly been uh, a shit show. <laughs> that Jared has even aged poorly. It really has. Uh, Y'all go look up uh, what the Punjabi prison match and see if you like that. I like that match because nobody can see what the fuck's going on. Exactly. <laughs> There's three layers of fucking bamboo cage. And you just can't see into it. It's like the red cage for hell to sell. People hated that shit. <laughs> um, and we're not making this up. This is actually some things that happened on WWE pay per views. Dude, dude, like it wrestling you can say that wrestling is not what it used to be anymore because it absolutely is not. It, in terms of athleticism, it's better. Character work, mostly better from, you know, previous eras. I mean, some people still could use better characters. Some people are committing whole hog to their characters. But like we had Gene Snitsky with like a baby doll. We had Al Snow carrying a like mannequin's head around. Perry Saturn was given a mop. Came like, fucking <laughs> casket full of spaghettios. Uh there was the whole Katie Vick thing. Like yeah. in the words of some uh YouTube commentators for wrestling, wrestling back then was the drizzling shits. Like, it was bad. <laughs> It was bad. It was awful. It a lot of it does has not aged well. So. Whenever I say wrestling is good now, I am com- I am literally comparing it to then because I I got into wrestling during the Attitude Era and then I stopped having cable for a while and yeah. I couldn't watch wrestling anymore. And then I got back into it around 2007 ish, uh, around the Royal Rumble um, when uh, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker had that beautiful one-on-one before uh undertaker eliminated Shawn michaels Mm -hmm. and then that long-term storytelling of like put a pin in that for a few years and then they had you know one of the the great the great feud of Shawn michaels and undertaker um Um, and that's that's like and i say all of that to be like that's one of the shining moments but everything else everything else fucking these were these were the eras of you know the Nexus, the core afterwards, you had the fucking League of Nations taking on Christ, everybody. I forgot about the core. Um, but I mean, like, 2000s WWE was a trash fire. Like, the biggest storyline after 9-11, which, again, coming back, because this is the day that we're recording, was Eugene, a mentally challenged wrestler, beating a terrorist leader. If I remember that correctly, right? That was one of the fucking matches we had. And then ultimately yeah. Undertaker choke slammed him through the stage and they wrote Too that guy hell. off. And that guy had to leave wrestling because WWE fucking ruined him. Like it was he was a he still is a great wrestler. He's a great wrestler. He shows up in his local indies once in a while, but he left wrestling, went to become a school principal. Like the guy's love for wrestling was killed because Vince and them were just so fucking racist. Like, and it, it wasn't even it wasn't even his fault at all. Too, it was just the circumstance of that character. I just I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. know what I don't know doing. why you have that man play a Middle Eastern guy. The man was Italian. <laughs> like, this is not the '90s anymore. It's not like we're gonna get this Italian guy and have him play a Native American. Like, oh god, I, they keep like doing that shit. Man. I, I just feel like you know, Vince McMahon just had things in his brain that should have just never paper he had ideas and gimmicks in his brain that should have just never materialized that was definitely one of them because nobody was stopping you know, you have it was every, he was unchecked you have everybody in the back you have bruce pritchard you have all those guys back there and all they're doing is yes yes anning him they're, yes boss and like they're doing whatever he fucking wants the man was a man child running a wrestling company because he was on top of the world because he beat wcw like and to be fair, Vince didn't beat WCW, or at least that Vince didn't. Vince Russo beat WCW. So Vince Russo, the sleeper sleeper agent in WCW, beat WCW. the poison of wrestling. Yeah, but like, I liked wrestling in the nineties. It was I, the characters were much more larger than life. You know, everything felt like very good, very much good versus evil. I grew up with the NWO versus Sting. I, I'm a WCW kid, growing up. And then I would, I would flip between both. And then everything I would, I would ended flip between both too. Yeah, everything ended with WCW. I followed it for a bit. Played the SmackDown versus Raw games on PS2. You so know, did I. 
all that shit. So I followed it for a bit, and then I was there when Evolution happened and all that. But then it was like, it was everything around those great moments that were unbearable. You know? It's like you had all these like great moments, and then just everything else was just shit. And then you had the SmackDown 6, which is a great era of fucking wrestling. And it's just kept getting worse because they were like, fuck, man, we don't we don't have to do quality control. These guys have nowhere else to go. Like, <laughs> And yeah, and jumping forward, like 2016, that era of SmackDown was amazing. That era of WWE was pretty good. And I thought, you know, finally, they're going to get back on track here and go towards like a different era, you know, with all this great wrestling and all these guys that they have now. And then 2017 occurs. And Jinder Mahal becomes champion. And that just rolls right back down. I have nothing, I have nothing against Jinder Mahal as a person. Jinder Mahal, I, I don't seems, he much. sounds like a I great just, guy, but I think, I think in an interview he talked about it, it's like that was not a good position for me at all. He's like, it did nothing to help me at all in WWE. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just didn't quite get what they were trying to do with Jinder Mahal. I mean... It, it could was, have worked if they had planned that better. It's just they it, they did it because that was before they finished up their deal for an Indian TV deal. So they were like, they'll watch it if we have an Indian champion. So that's why yeah. they just did it. They just shotgunned it onto the gender. So I mean, luckily since then we've made better decisions with Triple H. Whether or not it's better backstage there, I mean, there have been reports coming out of, you know, favoritism and racism and stuff like that, and I don't feel like that's completely unfounded at times. I also don't know if, you know, MVP is just a salty old man at this point or not, but I mean, it's always, it's all he said, she said, but it's like, the more companies that we have is better for the wrestlers. You know, it's better for people who have families and want to work and get their name out there and practice their craft. And it's like, we have all these places we can go to now that are working with other places. So I'm not just confined to this spot anymore. I can go sign yeah, with New it, Japan and wrestle in AEW or CMLL, or I can go to TNA, uh, TNA and maybe pop up an NXT and see what it's like down there, or maybe go to Noah, see what it's like in Japan. So again, it's like the quality is there. You just have to stop being a bitch about it. <laughs> it's like, just watch wrestling. And the thing is, like, unfortunately, Ricochet tried to talk reason into the internet wrestling community when he signed with AEW. They're like, I'm a fan of Ricochet, but I'm not going to watch him in this other company. And he started responding to that person and was like, I don't understand that logic. Like, <laughs> it's like, you say you care, well, but I'm not in WWE, so you stop caring. <laughs> Welcome like, to the IWC, Rick. Yeah, this is how we've been dealing with this shit for what? No, almost 30 years now. So the more the more successful these companies are, the more TV deals, the more streaming deals, the more places that can get exposure. It's good for everybody at the end of the day, fans included. Uh, I agree. Again, how we usually end these podcasts. If you're in the IWC, just shut the fuck up. It's like there was <laughs> ringside ringside's twitter shared an article stokely confesses that he had child out of wedlock not knowing that that tweet was aimed at dave Grohl because of that thing and i'm like they used this to pump a bullshit at him and aew instead of understanding the joke i think people need to gain an understanding that the less you interact with these kind of accounts in the iwc in general the more you'll enjoy wrestling yeah, the IWC you know, so. do not watch wrestling, so they cannot talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this episode. I know we kind of had a long tangent there at the end. Uh, but it, I mean, today's for us is a day of remembrance. And I mean, it's remembering like things were a hell of a lot worse. And they are leagues better now than what they used to be. And I kind of want to just keep that keep that going and keep that growing for everybody involved. And I mean, yeah, what can you do? You know, people are going to like things. People are going to hate things. People are going to hate our opinions. People are going to like our opinions, but at the end of the day, ultimately all that matters is we get to enjoy wrestling and the wrestlers get to feed their families. 
then, you know, go home healthy after putting their bodies on the line for us. Yep. So yep. also Swerve is not going to let somebody stick him with a hyper with a fucking needle. Like that's not <laughs> I mean he, he might, but you know I mean, that's not fucking needles are that would go through his cheek. That would have gone through his cheek. It, it's like he's not they're going to do stuff to show intensity, but like they have to agree to things. I don't think Hangman's just gonna like randomly take a vertebraker onto a cinder block if he didn't explicitly agree to do so. <laughs> like so enjoy the theater. I mean, these people yeah. put their bodies on the lines for us. Y'all have no idea how wrestling matches are, are are constructed, and it shows. Yeah, dude, it's just, you just it's a show. They're characters. It, it's a live action. It's a it's the closest thing to a it, superhero show without being a superhero show. It's it's stage fighting. It's stage fighting. But there are people that they do take bumps, they do get physical, and at the end of the day, I just want them to be healthy and paid and show off their craft. So. All right. Bad Blood is next, and they have announced a Hell in a Cell with Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. So, oh boy, let's see if this one can have some kind of intensity to it, not involving this, a bracelet. <laughs> like This should be the feud ender. Hopefully. Also, stop fucking giving WWE all the benefit of the doubt. They stole a fan's bracelet design and started selling it for ten dollars. Like they, yeah, their no, shit company at the end of the happened. day. Their shit company at the end of the of the day. Watch it for the wrestlers, not for the fucking company. Like uh, more like capitalism. Hey, there's no, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. <laughs> Which is why these videos are unmonetized. So. <laughs> That and we don't have any sponsors. That and we don't have any sponsors, or anything, so we're not making any money from this anyway. <laughs> we're just talking about this because we want to. All right, guys. Uh, what the fuck did you just share? All right, that one. <laughs> we we talked one last tangent before we finally sign off for tonight. We mentioned no Jericho on this card, and the card felt like it. It felt great with no Jericho, but then somebody yeah. brought up this fucking tweet, uh, from. 14 years ago from Chris Jericho and it is a uh, can you imagine terrorists trying to hijack a plane that WWE crew is on box cutter versus the craziest mofos on the planet game over jihad <laughs> and I'm like shut the fuck up Jericho <laughs> like wait he, did he post it on not oh he damn sure did 14 years posted, ago on 9-11 yeah nine year anniversary <laughs> uh it's Chris Jericho is such a shitty person underneath it all. It's just. Yeah. I hate the position that he's in in AEW. But that was the wow. last di that was the last digression. So yep, 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 yep. thank you, Jericho, for Wrap reminding up, us what up. the fucking holiday is all about. We don't Wrap even know up. if we can call it a holiday, <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a day. Uh, we will see you guys for Bad Blood uh, in t three weeks. Yeah, about three weeks. Sounds good. Uh, not next weekend, not the weekend after. Uh, yeah, four uh, four weeks from now. We'll see you guys for Bad Blood. Should be fun. I think only one card announced, so we'll see how that develops. But as always, if you guys are watching on the YouTube channel, we have links to the audio source if you want to listen to it on any other sources like Spotify, uh, Pandora, etc. If you're listening to it on Spotify or any other audiobook or podcast medium, we do have a YouTube channel where you can watch these videos uh, with visuals, mostly just the Discord call. And yeah, we will see you guys on the next episode. Take care, everybody, and continue enjoying wrestling. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye.